welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And of course, uh, the uh, Tiny11 made uh, people through the weekend uh, ask me questions about, you know, is that a official version of Windows that Microsoft has released? No, that is not. That is simply a project from some enthusiasts. And uh, it just is stripping down to a bare minimum what Windows 11 is all about. Removing all of the extras that, for a lot of people, don't use most of the time. So, but they're still there, you know, in the uh, system. Um, so, no, it's not. Of course, I get a lot of people saying, "Well, could that be, you know, a new version with no uh, minimum requirements and that everybody could install?" Once again, that is a big no. That's not the way it's working. Uh, that version is really just an experiment. And it shows that if you remove a lot of what's inside Windows that we never use, uh, you can definitely get some really light version of an operating system that would work on a PC. Uh, it does have all sorts of problems uh, depending on the the, uh, the um, systems that you install. So, you know, it, it has its flaws because it does not install and does not actually uh, work necessarily exactly like Windows itself can, can, you know, accommodate so many different situations, uh, hardware, software, and so on. The other thing also is that this is not a official version of Windows technically, so it's like won't be something that's going to update or get updates over the time and, and move on in the future. Uh, it can be activated with a key. Yep, if you have an old key lying around of uh, even Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, it actually activates uh, using these keys. So it can actually be an official Windows version. But like I said, not really much more than just fun and experimenting. Nothing more. This is not something to install on a PC to use every day because uh, you will have a lot of problems with it. You'll have a lot of things that don't work. You, The missing modules and the missing features, uh, some of them are going to show as missing and that is going to create some problems over time. So, um, you know, this is not, like I said, an operating system. If you are on a unsupported hardware and are thinking, oh, maybe this would be good for my unsupported hardware. Uh, simple answer is no, this is not good for unsupported hardware. This is good just for, you know, experimenting and seeing what happens. But it does show one thing over time. It's, and it shows that, um, you know, every operating system, be it Windows, be it uh, Mac OS, um, be it a lot of Linux distros, uh, become bloated and become really big over time and have so many extra fluff that could technically be removed and help, um, you know, make a system work in a much more efficient way using a lot less resources. Um, you know, not having the big gun, powerful PC to run it, actually. And uh, this is uh, a fact that as time goes by and you know, this is something that I've always complained of. The software, even not just the operating system, but the software that we use. Software tend to become very big. And I often will say that a lot of developers become lazy and not removing the extra fluff and just leaving it there and leaving it the way it is. Why? Because, oh, well, you know, people have a lot of RAM and a lot of disk space and, and that'll be okay. Um, you know, uh, when you go back to the days of old, old computers like Commodore and Atari and Amiga, that was efficient programming, making the most of what you have. Today, it isn't efficient programming. It's kind of lazy programming if you want. If you want uh, to try it, like I said, this is not going to be something official. But this is uh, definitely going to be, uh, you know, an interesting experiment to look at. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.